Okay, I'm here with Christian Natividad, coming off a big win in LFA last week. Christian, how you doing, man? Doing pretty good, man. Thank you guys for having me. Awesome. I see you at work now. What do you do? What do you do during the week? Uh, yeah, I'm a super busy man. Uh, I work a full-time job, so it's over at Titan Solar Power. I'm uh, one of the finance managers here, so I just oversee a pipeline, see a lot of money come in, uh, and pretty much just take care of the finances. Uh, I also still fight full-time, which is crazy that I'm able to do both things full-time. Uh, you got 24 hours in a day, but I mean, to be honest, 24 hours is uh, more than enough to do both. How do you balance that then? Like how uh, much time would you train in a day, let's say? Uh, so it, it ultimately depends. So if I'm in fight camp or not, um, if I'm in fight camp, then I probably train about maybe four uh, even coming out to five hours uh, a day. And then uh, for work, I'm here about eight to nine hours. So uh, when I do train, though, I do split it up and super fortunate for um, uh, Titan Solar Power just because they allow me to train in the middle of the day. So I come into work at seven o'clock. I work for a couple hours and then I go train for a few hours, go back to work. And then as soon as I get home, I do my second workout, whether it's like a um, strength and conditioning, small cardio workout, whatever it is. How do you find that balance then? Uh, to be honest, fighting is the balance for me. Like, uh, I, I like to think, uh, being a finance manager is work and my free time, I use that to, uh, fight MMA. <laughs> so like I said, the fight last weekend, talk me through how that fight felt from your, from your perspective. Uh, you know, it was a great fight. Um, I know when if you look at the uh, uh, when they had the official decision, when they raised my hand, I did, didn't look happy. And uh, I definitely was originally disappointed with uh, not getting a knockout because uh, everyone that watches me, they are expecting a knockout. Same thing with, my, uh, with myself. I expect to knock all these guys out. Uh, some, there were two uh, opportunities that I had where I could have finished the guy, but... Uh, I hesitated a little bit. Uh, after reviewing the fight, though, um, I think it's the best I've ever looked. I feel like I still have a lot to learn, but uh, just switching to this new camp, it does show that I'm definitely growing and definitely evolving. Um, as far as mistakes go, I think just uh, being a little, little hesitant on some things, but to be honest, it's better to play it smart than play a little dangerous and risk uh, losing a fight. You mentioned reviewing the fight there. Are you one of these guys that likes to watch it back as soon as possible? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I love to review footage. Uh, just I love to grow. So anytime I have an opportunity to see uh, uh, any growing opportunities, I definitely take advantage of it. Um, so like you said there, you moved camp before the fight. You're now fight ready. Um, talk to me how that move came about and then any differences you've noticed in your training or any improvement you felt you made in that time. Yeah, so the reason why I switched camps was just because uh, uh, Arizona Combat Sports, my original camp, phenomenal gym. They gave me a solid foundation. Um, I learned a lot of good stuff there and I actually had uh, amazing training partners. Uh, our brother is still there as well, yeah. but um, I felt like I needed to grow a little bit. Sometimes um, you just need to leave where you are just to uh, have a change in life. And uh, that's exactly what I needed. So I went over, I tried out the Fight Ready Gym. Um, there's a few more coaches there than there is at uh, Arizona Combat Sports. And it's, there's just more brains to pick from. And on top of that, there's way more uh, sparring partners for me. It's a more, um, I guess you could say, a smaller group of people. So there's a lot of 25ers, 35ers, 45ers. So I have a ton of different partners. And uh, the best thing about it is a lot of them are in the UFC, they're in Bellator, they're professionally fighting or whatever it is. So I'm not just training with uh, talented recreational people. I'm training with people that are actually doing it as a career. So who are some of the guys you were working with in the build up to this fight then? Yeah, so my main training partners for this fight camp were Hunter Azure, he is in the UFC, he's a bantamweight. Uh, Bruno Bulldog Silva, he actually just got two fight of the night bonuses in a row. Uh, he's a flyweight. And then uh, Rafael Moncini, he's uh, uh, not in the big show yet, 
He's a tough Brazilian fighter, though. He's actually fighting uh, any of this month uh, here in a local card here in Arizona. So obviously working with these UFC level guys and obviously a brother as well, how inspiring is that or how motivating is that for you or does it not really play a factor, do you think? Uh, definitely very, very motivating just because I know I'm training with uh, some elite talent, uh, some people that are capable of being a top contender, maybe even a possible uh, UFC champion. Uh, Bruno uh, Silva, for example, he trains very often with Henry Cejudo, which uh, Henry Cejudo, he's uh, uh, someone that I, I guess you could say look up to just because he's one of the, arguably one of the greatest combat athletes of all time. So um, just being able to train with those guys and being able to hang with them and give them work as well. I mean, definitely very uh, a lot of confidence in, uh, coming into it. I also um, was one of Korean Zombies' main training partners for his uh, Dan Ige fight. Yeah. So um, I did a total throughout his camp. Uh, I did a total of just about ten rounds with him, and just me being able to spar him, like learning that experience from uh, a veteran like the Korean Zombie who's been fighting at the top level for over ten years, and he's, I think, the number fourth ranked featherweight. I mean, definitely very inspiring. What's the zombie like in the gym? Because obviously he doesn't have that nickname for no reason. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, one of the nicest guys you, you're ever going to meet. He's super nice, super friendly. When he sees you, he's yeah. super excited. He's always like, Christian, Christian, how's it going? But uh, when, he, when you get locked in the cage with him, completely different person. He's an angry madman. He doesn't stop coming forward. He uh, hits hard. He has a lot of uh, a lot of pressure, so it's uh, very draining going with him. And I mean, like you said, he's he's a zombie, man. He yeah. uh, he can't kill someone that's already dead. So <laughs> it's just uh, when you go against zombie, uh, their goal is to survive. Yeah. Um. So obviously, to this point, your fight in LFA had been a bantamweight. Um. What went into the decision to step down to flyweight so early in your career? Uh. So ultimately, I do want to be a two division champion. <laughs> Um, I do want to take over the flyweights and the bantamweights. So I just thought I'd start at, uh, start at flyweight uh, with all the training that I'm doing, uh, with how busy I am. And unfortunately, the stress on uh, my weight that was going down. And uh, I felt like it didn't make sense for me to fight uh, at 35 when my weight shows that I'm a 25er. Uh, so um, as far as uh, taking over both weight classes, I just thought... I take over flyweight first. So the plans to focus on flyweight now rather than just to be one of these guys that bounces around a little bit, right? Uh, you know, I, I could bounce back and forth between flyweight and bantamweight. I mean, if I fight at bantamweight, I love to eat and that's uh, more food I could be eating. Uh, flyweight, I have to be a little bit more strict on my diet, but uh, I'll be going back and forth, but you'll see me as a flyweight champion before uh, I become a bantamweight champ. Um, so you're still very new to the pro game, just under a year in your career, but you're already 4-0. What do you put this activity down to? As far as uh, like how active I, I've been? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, the fact that you've only a year in and you've already had four fights. Oh, you know, what's crazy, man, is uh, throughout the year of 2021, I wanted to play a total of five times, which uh, we're already in the seventh month. It's... Uh, uh, we're coming on the middle of July and I've only had two fights. So I probably won't be able to fit in those other three fights within the next uh, five months, just because um, I'm not in a rush for anything. Mm -hmm. well, ideally, if, uh, if my body would let me yeah. and if, uh, uh, the commit, if, if I, if I were able to get all of these fights, like in the perfect world, dude, I would fight every other week. Yeah. Like I, I just love to compete. I love to, uh, be in the environment of, of competition. So um, to be honest, I, I love to be active, but at the same time, I, I don't want to rush into uh, all of these fights where I'm coming in injured, I'm coming in exhausted, overtrained, all that stuff. So I do definitely want to be smart about it as well. Part of the activity had to have come from the first two fights, which were obviously quick finishes as well, right? Oh, definitely. I mean, I, I always look for the finish. And yeah. I mean, the, the sooner I finish the guy, the quicker I could get another fight yeah. lined up just because uh, uh, the shorter the fight is, the less damage that 
I mean, I obviously too. Yeah. So obviously you had the first two fights, which were quick. And then how beneficial do you think it's been going the distance in your third and fourth fight? You know, what's crazy is um, I always, like I said, I, I always look for the finish. Uh, I grow a huge fan base from uh, the knockouts that I've received. But um, talking about not being in a rush again, yeah. I'm not in a rush to get to the UFC just because I need to get that experience in. So these past two fights, they've been decision fights. Definitely wish I got a knockout for both of them, but uh, the ring time that I got, it's uh, irreplaceable, you know, like, uh, and that that's exactly what I need. I need uh, some kind of adversity and some kind of uh, ring time just so I get a little bit more comfortable in there. Uh, something that I did notice between my third and fourth fight, uh, third fight went the distance and I was pretty, pretty tense in between rounds. Uh, my legs were pretty shot. Um, I was pretty tight throughout the entire fight. Um, my most recent fight, just uh, last week, I felt way more comfortable in between rounds. I felt fresh and I mean, it might be, uh, as far as switching, uh, to a new camp and having a new strength and conditioning coach, that might be a huge factor of it as well. But I did no uh, notice that walking out, uh, uh, when they announced my name and all that stuff, I felt way more comfortable and way more relaxed. The question I had noted down for later, but you've kind of touched on it a little bit, not being in a rush. Um, mm -hmm. You're young, 4-0. You seem like a patient guy, and you've obviously confirmed that. Um, looking forward in an ideal world, how soon do you see yourself making that jump, be it UFC, Bellator, PFL? Uh, you know, what's crazy is um, last year, uh, after my first fight, I thought I was going to be in the UFC uh, right now. Yeah. which um, I, I definitely do believe I could hang with those guys. I, I think I could beat a good amount of the people, especially on the flyweight roster. But uh, the more time I spent outside of the UFC is the more time I'm going to have to prepare yeah. for when I'm in the UFC. Because um, I said it um, in my post-fight interview as well. Once I get to the UFC, I'm there to take over. I'm not there just to be there. Yeah. So um, when I do sign that contract, that multi uh multi-fight deal with uh, UFC, you're going to see me climb up the rankings pretty quick. So as far as when you'll see me in the UFC, I mean, hopefully within the next uh, two years, maybe even three years, if uh, I'm pushing it back that far, but uh, you'll see me in there one day. No as a fan, as someone who's seen you fight, honestly, I don't think it'd be that long, but you're a patient yeah. guy, as you said. Um, Similar to the question I asked earlier about your teammates, um, what inspiration are you able to take from the fellow Hawaiians that have reached the top? People like Max Holloway, Ali Malay McFarlane, and obviously looking further back, you got BJ Penn, obviously. Yeah, so uh, the thing I love about Hawaii is uh, we're all family, you know? And that was a tough thing about uh, Zombie versus Ige, just because yeah. uh, Ige's from Hawaii. So I kind of had to, like, you know, betray my Hawaiian roots. But, <laughs> but, um, uh, definitely seeing um, all these Hawaiians come up to the top and even like uh, upcoming talent like uh, my brother, uh, Kamuela, uh, Kai Kamaka, all of these guys. It's just motivating just because um, I've seen uh, all these people like Kai Kamaka and my brother at like the regional or yeah. the local level, you know, when they're fighting on just uh, the amateur shows uh, in the smaller shows in Hawaii. And now they're fighting in the biggest promotion in the world. And if someone from a small town like them could do it, I definitely could do it as well. I just need to, like you said, be patient, make the right decisions and, you know, just show up to the gym and train because ultimately um, that's the secret recipe to success. Yeah, we've got enough Hawaiians around now. You can't be too far from getting that UFC Hawaii card finally, can they? Yeah, I mean... I feel like uh, Hawaiians, they're destined to be in the UFC just because uh, you see like a, a local street fight here in the mainland and like a lot of people just swing for the fences, you know, with zero technique at all. Uh, it, it's just crazy to see like uh, some of these street fights and how bad they are. Uh, you go to Hawaii, though, uh, growing up with it, for some reason, I don't know what it is, but everyone has an idea of fighting, even if they've never thrown a punch or a kick before. Uh, they, they have a, a, a stance that they have. Uh, they know how to throw kicks. They know how to throw punches. There's just some kind of dog that uh, a lot of these Hawaiians have, which 
very fortunate just because uh, if you need to get down and dirty in a fight where it becomes a slugfest, you, every Hawaiian has uh, that extra gear. Yeah. Um, so one day, UFC debut for Christian Natividad in the Blaze Dell, right? Oh, that will be awesome, man. <laughs> I, I'd love to fight. I, so what's crazy is um, I've never fought in Hawaii before, and I've, I definitely do want to uh, showcase my skills there just because um, it's home, man. I have a lot of family, friends there who want to see me live. And I mean, what place is it better to do in paradise where I could call that place my home as well? Um, so looking forward now, just sticking with LFA, there's a bit of a situation with the flyweight title. Obviously, um, Alta Murano is getting ready for a contender series fight. Um, so you look at that and there's a decent chance he might not even come back to the promotion. You obviously then got Charles Johnson, who won the interim title. Where do you see yourself around those guys? Uh, I definitely think uh, I could hang with them, with both of them. Uh, Victor Altamirano, um, I definitely think I could beat him, and I, I think I could knock him out as well. Uh, Charles, he's a, he's a little bit tougher. He's, he do, does have a lot of talent, and he's a big 25er as well. But um, again, like a fight's a fight, and uh, I love to get down and dirty. Uh, same thing with Charles, too. He's a very, 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 very nice guy. We uh, spoke a lot uh, back at LFA 110, but if it comes down to where I have to fight him and uh, yeah. uh, square off with him, 100% down for that. That guy's a dog, and I'm a dog as well, so may the best dog win. Do you see Victor being able to make that jump up to the UFC with the Contender Series now coming up? Uh, I definitely do think uh, he has a lot of talent. I think he's very creative with his, uh, with his strikes. Um, I don't know who he's fighting as far as um, in his contender – in his contender series fight, but I think he is capable of being uh, on the UFC roster as a flyweight. Um, just to finish off here a little bit quickly, just two or three pieces of advice you'd give to someone, it could be MMA related, could be just generally who stumbles across this interview. Yeah, so um, uh, first piece of advice, um, I know we talked a lot about being patient and to be honest, be, being patient is key. So let, uh, talking about it in a fighting aspect, um, and this is something that I'm still learning as well. Like you can't rush everything. Uh, I know I try to get that one punch, one shot knockout, but sometimes you just need to relax and uh, wait for the opportunity to, to present itself. And when it does, uh, that's when you take it. Same thing goes with life. Sometimes um, you just got to hustle, you know, and uh, an opportunity won't present itself right away, but that's why you just got to keep doing your thing, keep hustling. And when an opportunity presents itself, uh, that's when you just go all in. And then my second piece of advice, it's more just towards MMA is, I mean, don't be afraid to get hit, man. Like it's, it's MMA. Everyone's going to get hit. Everyone's going to get rocked. Everyone's going to get caught. So it's the beauty of the sport. Anything could, uh, anything could happen. You could be winning the, in a 15 minute fight, you could win 14 minutes, 59 seconds of a fight, but lose that last second. And that could be the entire game changer where if you lose by knockout, you know, so um, just embrace it. And I mean, you're going to get hit, so accept it. So once you do accept the fact that you're going to get hit, you'll be able to let go a little bit more. Obviously, big fight coming up this weekend. Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier. How do you see that going? Uh, that's a tough fight, man. So I think uh, Conor McGregor and like everyone's saying, Lost his last fight just because he didn't, doesn't have the same dog yet in him. Um, I definitely could uh, agree with that in a way, just because uh, Conor McGregor, he's all the way at the top. or he, He's already made it. You know, he's uh, one of the highest paid athletes in the world. Definitely the highest paid uh, MMA fighter uh, ever. So um, he doesn't really have too much to prove. And with that being said, uh, the drive that he was training for his second for a fight. I mean, it wasn't up there, but coming across uh, that loss against Poirier, especially in the way that it happened, spectacular fashion uh, in a knockout, I'm pretty sure Conor McGregor is pretty motivated to win that rivalry just because they're one and one now. And um, this is where the legacy lies. Um, just quickly, um, obviously being a flyweight, we saw Brandon Moreno beat Davidson Figueredo recently. What do you make of that fight? I thought that was a great fight, man. And what's crazy is um, I, I saw Figgy. I thought Figgy was going to win that fight. I thought that guy was I, – I, I think that guy's a stud. He's a complete hammer, man. He's 
uh, technical in all aspects on the feet, on his back, on top, on the ground. He, he's a dangerous guy. And for Moreno to completely outclass him the way that he did, he was untouched and he uh, beat him in spectacular fashion. So I think Moreno, he's uh, something dangerous. And just the story that he has as well, being the last pick on the tough show, being cut from the UFC and then making his way back to the UFC and becoming the champion. I feel like that's a a motivating story in itself. I want to thank you for the time today, Christian. Just, let everyone know where we can keep up what you're doing and shout out any sponsors you've got if you want. Yeah, definitely. So um, I do have social media. Uh, I am trying to work on having all of my uh, uh, social media handles the same just so it's easy for <laughs> everyone. But uh, main one is Instagram, though. It's just my name, Christian Natividad. You'll see all my fight updates on there. Huge sponsors I want to thank. Uh, Hawaiian, fight, Hawaiian Fight Gear. Always been with me from the start. They've... Uh, from my first fight to even up to now, they've, they've always been in, been in my corner. And uh, I really appreciate that uh, from them. Uh, Warfield Hair Bar, if you're up in Scottsdale, man, get, get your haircut or anywhere <laughs> here in Arizona. If you want these fancy stripes or this nice haircut, I actually have a, a surprise haircut coming in uh, probably towards the end of this year or beginning of next year. So all my fans just uh, be looking out. And then last, uh, most importantly, Titan Solar Power. They're my employment, but also my main sponsor. They, um, uh, the minute they figured out that I was fighting MMA, they went all in and they um, fully supported everything that I do. And uh, definitely would not be able to chase uh, both of these dreams as far as being a finance manager and MMA if it wasn't for them. So a uh, huge thank you to them. Awesome. I want to thank you again for the time today, Christian. Best of luck with everything going forward especially the rest of the year here in LFA. Let's get one or two more fights. That'd be awesome. Definitely. Awesome. Thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it.